One killer hand car is traveling at 25 meters per second. The driver sees a menacing deer ahead on the road and slams on the brakes, applying a force of negative 172,200 newtons. How long must the brakes be applied to come to a complete stop? So we have another problem. We're going to do knowns and unknowns just like we've done before. We're going to keep working our way through uh, and see what we can come up with. So for starters, we have a mass. 2100 kilograms. We have a velocity that he's traveling. That's going to be an initial velocity because it's what's happening at the beginning of the problem. 25 meters per second. Okay, driver sees a deer, slams on the brakes, applies a force. Negative 172,200. How long does it take the brakes to be applied to come to a stop? So how long does it take? What's the time interval to come to a stop? So velocity at the end to be zero. Okay, so it's worth looking at our equations again to figure out what equation we need to use here. So this is a momentum problem. This is the momentum unit. So we need a momentum equation. We got three momentum equations that we talked about. Conservation momentum, the definition momentum, and then impulse momentum. So this is an impulse momentum problem. How do I know? It talks about the force applied on an object in a collision. Anytime you see force, every time you see force, it's going to be this. So F delta T, delta T is just the time. Um, delta P. So this is the equation we're going to use. So I'll go ahead and write this as delta T since that's the way it's in the equation. So F delta T equals delta P. And just as a friendly neighborhood reminder, the way you find P is P equals MV. And delta just means change in, so it's final minus initial. So what you need to do here, and I'll give you time to work on it, is figure out what the momentum is for the final and the initial. Use those to find the change in momentum, and then use that stuff to find the time interval t. Okay, as before, I'm going to give you some time to work here. And then I'll come around and check it. Okay, so let's keep working here. So the next step, the thing we need to figure out is we need to know how to plug this in. So F is negative 172,200. Delta T is what I'm solving for. And a lot of people ask, like, what do I need to do with the delta T? You're just solving for it. It's just like X. The reason I don't write it as T is because people think T is, like, falling in that sort of thing. This is not that. This is time of the collision. So I call it something different. I just call it delta T. But delta T is just like X. It's what you're solving for. Okay? Then we need this delta P business. We need to figure out the delta P and delta P is final minus initial. So I need to find those values. So P final first. P is MV, so MV. To find the v, uh, P final, I need the final velocity, which is 0. So PF is just 0. OK? PI, MV. 2100 times the velocity at the beginning, which is 25. So 2100 times 25, 
Okay, so it's final minus initial, so it's 0 minus 52,500. We need to get delta t by itself, so that means dividing the negative 172,200 to both sides. get what happens when you let computers pick the numbers. 0 0.30 seconds. Again, apparently computers think that's how fast you can stop because I just let the computer pick the numbers. Point, 0.3 seconds. If, if, you, if, you st if you stopped with the brakes in 0.3 seconds, you would die. <laughs> <laughs> that would just be that would just be too that would just be too fast of a stop. We're doing airbags. It's the the airbag stop is still longer than that. I guess if you had an airbag it would help, but I'll just like put pillows in my windshield. There you go.